Brando, I finna slam dunk. Get big on you fake pumps. That bump in the fake pump. Bitch, fell for the pump fake. Got him talking like first take. Get it right on the first take. Hit the hole in the first. Take. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying to hear your plan. <laughs> Nigga, I don't know. <laughs> Nigga. I don't fucking know. Oh, I ain't I, I ain't gonna cap you down, bro. And we recording right now. I'll tell the whole world. I'm not Mr. Clean. I'm just gonna keep it a buck with you. You know the crazy thing about it? I had a cleaning business. I'm not Mr. Clean. I'm gonna make sure my bathroom is decent enough that I can use that motherfucker. And I'm gonna make sure my floor is bearable to walk on. And the counters just got them, you know, decent. And I'm a dust once a year. That's it. I am not Mr. Clean, my nigga. I'm just not that nigga. I like to clean. Yeah, I, I like know. Keeping my shit clean. I'm not Mr. Clean though, bro. It's but actually I, therapeutic. I used to be Mr. Clean until I started doing all the shit I do now. Now it's like, man, I fucking make thirty t-shirts every other fucking day, and I fuck that bitch right back up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, what we said we was about to start this talking about. Oh, what you would do if you was if, if you were single without kids? See, you know it's kind of hard to talk about that type of shit because people gonna be like, "Oh, this nigga hate his kids." No, nah. <laughs> that's what people think when you have those type of conversations, though. No, nah, I think about being single all the goddamn time. I'd be like trying to figure out where would life would go if it wasn't. My children are my motivation, though. I'd be like, because I'd be thinking about my boss and shit, and he, you know, he's a. Would you still have the same job if you didn't have kids? No. Like, would you have, like, even aspired to to stay in college? Yeah. I probably would have finished college, but I probably wouldn't have tried to go into some a field where I knew I was going to make good money. You know, I probably would have just did what I wanted to do. Which was? Something in wildlife, something outdoorsy, something like that. Nothing. So, so you basically would have moved to goddamn Montana and just start goddamn pillaging something. off the land or some shit. Just something. Herding cattle or some shit, fucking working for the fish and wildlife and whatever the hell. And now, and now you got kids, so you got to be an everyday man and goddamn be structured work a job, and yeah. work a job. I be, and, but I be wondering, like, what it be about people who don't have kids? Like, what motivates them to do what they do? Like, I, cause I, and you know, I hate when y'all say that. No, I mean, I know you hate that, but like, it really is like. Okay, so like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Somebody asked me that recently. But mm -hmm. first thing first I want to say, though, is, um, and I definitely got to make a clip out of this because I meant to post this shit on Facebook the other day. Niggas that don't have kids that be bragging about not having kids, that shit lame as fuck. That uh, shit is super lame, bro. I like, mean, from their point of view, it's probably not that. It's probably like fun, but it's like, to me. Why are you bragging, though? I'm talking about I don't like get the people, bragging. people, I don't get the people bragging. that look at other people like, ew, they have kids. Yeah. Like, they got to be responsible. It's like, nigga, mm -hmm. you still need to be responsible too. Because don't nothing trip me out more than somebody that doesn't have kids that still ain't got their shit together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and do you know how easy it is just to go get you a fucking decent job, get you a bad ass apartment, and goddamn just live for yourself? That shit yeah. easy as fuck. Mm -hmm. So if you fucked up with no kids, no responsibilities, nothing going on, bro, what's wrong with you? Why are you bragging about not having kids? Yeah. And that shit is only appealing to little ass girls. Mm -hmm. Like grown ass men that brag about not having kids, it's like, bro, only like 21 year old girls think that's cute as hell. Are them them like old older women, not old women, but older women that have kids that's in like high school and college, mm -hmm. they think that's cute. Because yeah. they like, I don't want no man with no babies. He better have grown kids like me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Only they think that's cute when you don't have kids. I think, I don't know, there's a, especially with our generation, there's just a level of just like self-centeredness that comes with that. Like, I feel yeah. like before it was never like that. Like, niggas was willing to be stepdaddies back in the day. Yeah, you talk about that all the time. Yeah, so like nowadays it's like, you know, that's not the case no more. I feel like we just a real selfish generation, real self-centered generation. Because I got, I got... Like I was saying, like my boss, bro, like he he's married, but I don't think they have plans of having any children. They've been married for a long time, and T typically couples like that can't have kids. I've seen that a lot lately. Yeah, but I don't know if that's the case with him. I don't think that's the case with him. You think they just don't want any? I don't think they want any. I think. So what do you think so, is wrong with that though? I think they're so career driven because at the end of the day, you're just you're. 
you're focused on a career that when you die, they're just going to put somebody in your place anyway. Correct. And, all right, you, you're you making all this fucking money, but who, like, what's it going to go to it? Like, what is it, in, where does it end up? So, you know what I'm saying? You spend your whole life. There's people who can be too career driven, like the Oprah types. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's just like, okay, Oprah's a billionaire, but what the fuck is the use of that? But why do you think it's a bad thing for somebody to kind of be selfish in, in their own way of living? I, I think, I don't know. Something about me says that my I have a duty to this earth and this planet and this world, kind of like raise smarter, better more, you know, loved and loving human beings than I was. Mm -hmm. And to try to make the world better through each generation. That's what I'm trying to do with my son. You know what I'm saying? Even though, like, you know, I could be an asshole to my son, but for the most part, he gets a hundred times more love than I got as a kid. You know what I'm saying? And just each generation's duty is to make the world better. And I feel like if you're only living for yourself, that's that's another thing is, like, why I feel like, that has an effect on how people vote. It has an effect on the things you think about the world and whether you, you know, care about war or you care about whatever. You know what I'm saying? It has a lot of effect on that. Like, just being, having a family and having other people to give a fuck about will mold a lot of your, uh, the way you think about the world. You know what I'm saying? I hundred percent agree with you, and, yeah. and 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 that's why sometimes when we have these type of conversations, I try to like put myself out of it mm -hmm. because um, I don't think I think like the average person that doesn't have kids. Yeah. Like I more so think about uh, society and you know purpose and, and and things that's going on. <laughs> Typically, my friends that don't have kids, they don't think about none of that shit. Yeah. They don't even think about like why purpose would even be important. Mm -hmm. Like that shit is just blank to them. Like, in the age group we're in, and I'm going to put the age group at 29, 28, 29 to about 34, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have kids at this range right here, you're you're still a little childish. And what I mean childish is, mentally, your focus is really on going to the bar and having sex with some little girls. Mm -hmm. Because... Typically, if you in, if you in your early thirties, the motherfuckers that's still out going crazy is between the age group of twenty two and twenty seven. Mm -hmm. That's the age group right there. So you're typically only going to be sleeping with little girls that ain't got shit to do. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I don't know how that shit don't get like tiresome for a nigga. Yeah, somebody like me though, I ain't gonna lie. I can't just keep having sex with a twenty two year old who like. Recently, one of my friends just told me I didn't know shit about life and I didn't know shit about the world. Mm -hmm. If he feels like that about me at 32, whoo, 22? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nigga ain't no shit about shit, for real. Yeah, bro. I feel like, uh, I don't know, I feel like it's important. Like, children, children are the next generation. And also, children give you something to focus on beyond your own selfish ambitions or whatever the fuck you might want. And... After that, it's like, I mean, you you find you get to the India India Road and you feel like, well, it all wasn't for nothing. You know what I'm saying? I feel yeah. like there's some sort of like end goal to it when you have. So it just leaves that hope factor at the end of the road. Hope and hope for the future and hope for all the people on this fucking planet. Honestly, if you're raising good human <laughs> beings, like what we have a. We're so, like, we key in on so much bad shit that, like, like I don't know. Humans are very negative negative beings, bro. Like, we're very fucking, we're very negative focused. You know what I'm saying? Hey, now that you said that, mm -hmm. I want to uh, get on the camera and apologize to Damo. Oh, you said that? Because that shit I just said to him on the phone before we start recording, that shit was fucked up. I don't think about it. Like, I was laughing my ass off. I still think it's funny, but what? that shit was fucked up. Um, when uh, when he was talking about crimes, and he was like, "See, man, niggas don't know that like it's okay to be broke sometimes." And I was like, "Hell no, nah, I'd rather be in the feds with them niggas than broke <laughs> with your ass. With, <laughs> broke with your broke ass. Yeah. Fuck that." Yeah. Now I think about it, that shit was kind of fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, what you picking, bro? I'm gonna be honest mm. with you, dog. Because me my and my life, dad had this conversation a lot, dog. My life could never go like that. 
You want to know why? But you, but you got to pick between the two. Because me and my dad have this conversation just for fun sometimes. I'll be drunk. Me and him be up late as hell. Like, bro, like, it's like. I you, don't even have the. I don't even think there's an option of me being, like, broke. I really don't think it's an option. Man. I'm, I'm eventually, like, Don't nigga, personalize it. I think don't of, care. Think of people that you know and their mindsets bro, and their I don't routines care and how if they I think. like. If I like deliver newspapers, eventually I'm gonna become the manager. Like that's just the type of person I am. I'm not like no. That's what that's what I'm I saying. I can't stay broke forever, bro. Step step out of that mentality yeah. and put yourself in somebody else's shoes who don't have that mentality, who think like the world is against them, and mm-hmm. every time they try to do something, somebody's blocking them. The man, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to put yourself in that, and then you got to pick. Like you want to live I'll good for broke. ten years and 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 then do ten years, or you want to just be broke the whole twenty? I'll be broke, broke the whole twenty, broke. Because at the end of the day, rich and poor mentality, bro. We know this. You could be broke as fucking like have one of the funnest lives of ever, bro. Like I don't know why like niggas don't. It think, depends what you call fun, bro. Okay, bro. Let me tell you. I have story. fun doing a lot of different shit that other people don't. Call fun, but yeah, like, that's why I said it depends what you call fun. Because I'm like, be if you want to go pop bottles in the club and like buy a fucking Bugatti, and that's fucking, not fun to me neither. That's, that's but fucking, but like you know, some people think I just talked about my brother Damo. Some people think his life is is lit, mm-hmm. nigga. That shit is a fucking horror film to me. Mm-hmm. Like I gotta wake up every day with this fucking disgusting ass depression on my mind. Mm-hmm. Then I'm broke as a motherfucker. I'm gonna edit that out. You can't, just, <laughs> you can't be calling niggas broke. That shit head ass. <laughs> but nah, for real though, like. Like, bro, I just can't live like that, dog. M- moving on, because that's the edit point. <laughs> Let's wrap this up before I start shitting on that nigga even more, bro. So you said... Uh, I that wasn't me, you. Damo. That wasn't me. I'm editing that shit out. He not even going to know what you're talking about. Okay. That shit's going to be gone. But uh, where would you be at if you was if, if, if you was single, no kids? Though? I thought like, about this several times over, bro. I probably would be riding bulls. Riding bulls? Yeah. Bro, shut the fuck up. Bro. bro, I think that shit is fucking dope. I've thought about this shit several times over. Nigga, in or Mexico? Anywhere, nigga. They ride bulls in Brazil. They ride bulls in America. They ride bulls all over the place. But you nigga, know what where else? do they ride bulls in America? I don't know these type of things. Texas, this is your field right Texas, here. Texas, Oklahoma. Fuck oh, they do be doing yeah. that ignorant ass shit when I be and it's out some, there. Like, it's motherfuckers who rich off that shit, too. Like, like the real good bull riders, they make a lot of money. Hey, can I tell you some more ignorant shit? Because uh, wow. somebody got mad about that Muhammad Ali tech I had last episode, too. They were like, that was the most ignorant shit I ever heard in my life. <laughs> I was like, bro, my bad. And I forgot I'm, what I'm you even said. I forgot what you even said. I was like, bro, just ain't want to go to war. He not no goddamn hero. He just oh. ain't want to go to war. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm about to say another ignorant statement. So to the person that DM'd me about that, I'm sorry. You might want to fast forward about 30 seconds. Bro, when I be in places like Texas, and my mom be like, you want to go to the Alamo? Mm -hmm. And I be like, yeah, let go. Mm -hmm. I be hearing everybody talk about it. Mm -hmm. I be like, what the fuck is this? (laughs) (laughs) Bro, my bad, bro. I'm just one of them type niggas like, nigga, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But also, I think that's like one of my flaws because uh, I've been to so many different countries and seen so many things that like some shit, I just be like, okay, what the fuck is this? Like, it's a different feeling. Like, it's an abandoned church downtown in Augusta. And, like, everybody thinks it's, like, the coolest shit in the world. Mm. But, you know, I lived I lived in Europe before, so I done seen some fucking... Massive. Woo, yes. Cathedral type shit. The marble glass, the yeah. fucking stained glass windows. Fucking mm. just artists that, that, uh, that uh, you hear about in books. I done seen these niggas live paintings. Mm-hmm. Like, I done seen that type of shit. So my way of thinking is just totally different when it comes to, like, art and when it comes to, you know, just culture in, 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 in general. In, in, in you know, Europe is, like, a, a very... It's had a... It's old. America yeah, it's not old, that old. Yeah, it's an older. Yeah. So it's so much shit you'll look back and be like, God damn, that shit dope. But, um, and America was built uh, on the backs of slaves, so yeah. it's a totally different country. Uh, yeah. uh, excuse me, culture here. But yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, you said you said riding bulls, riding bulls, or like on an Alaskan fishing boat catching crabs or some shit, that type shit. See, I always ask you that because uh, when you go on your little field trips downtown and uh, mm-hmm. hang and hang out with Damo, that's my last time saying his name. But <laughs> when you mm-hmm. go down there and you be like, eh, if I was single. 
I could I could live in an apartment downtown Augusta, and I'd be looking at you like nigga, hell no. And you'd be like, nigga, I could. I could I could live here, bro. I can't I can't I can't do that shit. Why not? Just too many people for once. It's too many people. Way too many crackheads. And I'm a save the world type of nigga. So every mm-hmm. time somebody asks me for some change, bro, if I got some change in my pocket, bro, I'm going to feel disgusting all day if I don't give it to him. Like, I can't tell nobody no, though. It just depends. I got finesse one time. Now I don't. I ain't. What you mean finesse, though? Like when that one time that Arab man, you know when oh, yeah. you got the pinky ring? That's different though. That's huh? different. I'm talking about like people that's clearly homeless. Like you see that you see they homeless every day on the streets and they, they can still be homeless. finessing. Nah. They can still like niggas that you see on the streets every day. Nigga be out there blind as hell with a goddamn cup. Goddamn and they got down five hundred dollars and shit. That nigga well, you know, typically corner, when you in a city his Mercedes. And peel the fuck out and go home to Italy. That happens, but That's but, what I'm saying. but 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 typically when you live in a city, you know the homeless people. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know who the homeless if you people in are in that environment. You, yeah, you know. But um, yeah, dog. Trust me, the single life ain't got now. Ain't the life, bro. Nah, I mean, I think about it sometimes, but like me, being, it depends how you do it, though. Like at this at this point in my life, me single is kind of stupid, just because I got kids, yeah. and I know our generation is definitely anti kid, so it's like. No, nah, I wouldn't say I'm that. Not gonna find, I mean, I'll find niggas me, got kids, bro. I know, but our, our generation is anti kid, as in like you not gonna get with a girl who has kids, and guys aren't or and girls aren't gonna get with a dude who has two kids. Oh, okay, like, I got it's you. just like they not finna do that shit. Yeah, like they'll hang out with you, they'll probably hook up with you and shit like that, but they're not finna like be with you type shit. So it's like, you know, what I'm saying you unless you find somebody else who got kids, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's one of them type things. It's very uh. Yeah, girls are just weird now. And that's the funny part because, like, people people act like they so highly valued. Like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck about you anyways. Like, my kid is more valued than any of them single bitches that I could ever be with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, them niggas got more value than most of these girls out here got them popping ass, honestly, bro. It's like, people are fucking weird. Like, I had a conversation with like somebody. they just so high and mighty. Like, oh, I got too much value to get with a nigga who got kids. Or, like... Nigga, who the fuck is you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's just funny to me. Like, that's... Nah, I'm not even going to say his name. Not even going to do it. Never mind. Keep going. But... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to say his name. I had a conversation, uh, something about that. I was talking about, like, women online when mm-hmm. they be making head-ass posts and they be saying shit like, uh, ooh, I want somebody to lick my coochie like Jeepers Creepers uh, lick that bus. Oh, that nigga head-ass. And I, I be like, Bro, if that if I'm that glad I do not have social media. If that anymore. ain't the That's most weird shit. shit in the world, like yeah, like and then like uh, that same type of woman will post nothing but pictures of her ass, and then the next post will be, I don't know why I only attract men that only want me for my body, and yeah. I'll be like, what the fuck? Stop the cap. Yeah. Then even deeper, bro. Me and Dama was talking about this shit. <sighs> Bruh, the women that be online basically praising and screaming out, hey, I'm a hoe. Mm-hmm. And then also be making posts about goddamn their worth and who they are and how a certain man needs to treat them like this. It's like, Shawty, you just posted five times in a row about you being a hoe and mm-hmm. you being able to fuck who you want and cutting a nigga off and finding you a new nigga and mm-hmm. all that type of shit. And then you start posting about how you're a wife material. And that's mm-hmm. another thing, dog. A lot of motherfuckers don't be knowing that, like, and I'm not getting in my goddamn uh Brandon Cooks bag. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? The new Kevin Samuels. Shout I'm out. not getting in Shout that. Shout out bag. B Cooks. But a lot of a lot of motherfuckers, not even just women, men too, don't be knowing that like, hey bro, you not really like the type of man or woman that somebody wanna be with. <laughs> you yeah, know what like I'm you're saying? not you're not somebody that I'll risk it all for. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Like it'll it'll be a woman like um You know what, what I hate though? What? I we talk we've talked about this before, but like I hate being the husband type nigga though. Yeah, we have talked about this. Because, you know, you talking about tweaking. these hoes these hoes out here. We know they hoes. Nobody yeah. wants to wife them. Eventually, some lame nigga will, of correct, course. Correct, correct, correct. But sometimes I just wish I had that, like, I wish I had that what Face has, like, that tool 
Like, like I wish to be a tool, the nigga that got that that girl just want to fuck. Yeah, that don't don't even want to be with you. They just want to fuck you, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've um, I've met a lot of people that's like that before, and that shit looks depressing as hell. So, what do you think is that quality that makes them the tool rather than the hubby? You know what I'm saying? Oh, this is interesting. Let's break it down. I got you. I got you because I literally can form all these bitch ass niggas. I shouldn't have said bitch ass. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this nigga is retarded. <laughs> I could form all these young men yeah. into one young man, and I can mm. tell you what the traits are that women just find attractive sexually mm-hmm. and not find attractive mentally. Mm-hmm. So first off, I already said it. They bitch ass niggas. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say it. And I know you mentioned face name earlier. I'm not talking about face. I'm mm-hmm. just talking about like tools in general. Cause yeah. face is not a bitch ass nigga. No. But uh, number one, they bitch ass niggas though. And what I mean by bitch ass niggas is like a bitch ass nigga is is, is typically someone that's like super self centered and has mm-hmm. super feminine qualities. Like super mm-hmm. feminine. Like 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 they're. They're over feminine to the point where they only care about exterior shit, like mm-hmm. how they look, how they dress. And I'm not saying it's nothing wrong Very, with like keeping uh, up with yourself. Surface level. Yeah. yeah. And number two, they're really, really dumb. Mm-hmm. Like their way of thinking is the way that a woman would think typically. Like it's like. Damn, are you calling bitches dumb? Nah. <laughs> nah. Damn, bro. I'm going to keep it a buck. <laughs> Women be talking about some dumb ass shit. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it a buck. All right, like, you ain't calling bitches dumb. You just saying they be talking about some dumb ass shit. Yes. And women relate to that dumb ass shit. Yes. Okay. So if you a nigga, and those type of men yeah. like to attract women, so they pick up feminine traits. Like, I'm going to give you an example in a minute. And I knew gotcha. I, I knew I was going to say dumb on name again, but I got to tell you about this on camera. But um, so typically a man like that, bro, what he does is he picks up women traits. So he knows when he meets a woman, the first thing she wants to talk about is zodiac signs. This mm-hmm. nigga don't know shit, don't give a fuck about no zodiac sign. Yeah. But now this nigga know all the stars, all the alignments, all the Greek goddamn mythology, all that shit. He yeah. know all that shit now. So first thing he does every time he meets a woman is, "Ooh, you look like a Scorpio." <laughs> like he getting that bag, he getting yeah. the Tyrese bag, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um Another thing about it is um, he's not very driven. Mm-hmm. So he's not going to have the type of things that like women naturally find attractive. because uh, Attractive in a husband. But, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, yeah so attractive in, in a husband, but, but even more so a partner that you want to consistently deal with. Mm-hmm. So like typically a woman, she likes to go to somebody's house kick her shoes off, have a glass of wine, relax, and feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll, I'll reference a Drake line. Uh, she came in her heels and left in her cozy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's what women like to do. And mm-hmm. typically those type of men, like, they don't really live those type of lifestyles. They live mm-hmm. like a rowdy, rawr type of lifestyle. Like, mm-hmm. they got two other roommates that's there. on the same shit they own. Yeah. It's always a party every night. Yeah. Niggas... Niggas don't ever cook shit. It's just mm-hmm. a goddamn. It's Chinese food in the fridge from yeah. two days ago. You goddamn, know what I'm you go over there. The bathroom ain't that clean. It's like, it's like a house party type vibe going yeah. in there. It's not like they probably got like some beanbag chairs in there. They play video games a lot. Type shit. Mm-hmm. It's not like where you go where a grown ass man would be at. Yeah, you know I mean? there you go. Yeah. And that's why when you do live like that, when, women come in your crib and be like, a girl lives here. They instantly feel like a girl lives here because, yeah. like, they're used to niggas. When like, your shit put together, yeah, especially yeah. like when they used to seeing men that like don't really, yeah. But last and damn sure not least, um, they just not they just not very manly, so they don't mm-hmm. make women feel secure. Like oh, women yeah, don't yeah. feel safe when they're around them. Mm-hmm. So it's like, but they have the traits that that can attract them physically. But as far as like wanting to be with them. Mm-hmm. They don't have that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like typically, uh they they come around them and, and they have they might have great sex with them and they mm-hmm. might be like physically attracted to them. Mm-hmm. And then one day they might be in the mood to want to go out and they go out mm-hmm. and like a guy approaches them and says some, you know out the way shit. Yeah, some out the way shit and bruh just kinda like <laughs> they don't feel safe around him. Yeah. It's like, damn, I don't feel safe around this guy. Yeah. But I like 
I enjoy having sex with him. I just don't enjoy his company very much. Yeah. And uh, he eats booty. Because those, <laughs> those niggas eat booty. Yeah. They they eat the box on the first day. Yeah. And they eat the booty eventually. That's okay. the type. That's that type. Do you want to be that type? I mean, I eat a booty. I don't give a fuck. No, I'm talking about do you want to be that type guy where a woman just wants you for physical reasons? I've wanted that before. I've never had that because at the end of the day, bro, I, I don't know what it is about me, dog. I just have this like level of like people come around me. I have a level of maturity sometimes that like they feel like, oh, okay, like my point number two about them not being that intelligent so they don't talk about shit. Yeah, like that was my second point. A lot of people when they meet me, like if you just knew me through like social media or my online uh presence, I guess. I don't <laughs> I don't really have an online footprint or presence other than this. Yeah. But like if you you would expect me to be kind of like mature and shit, but and I mean to be kind of wild, I mean. And then when you when you meet me in real life, like I'm really kind of like chill, like I really don't be on like no kind of wild shit. Yeah. Unless I'm like super trashed or drunk or some shit. But like for the most part, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I feel like I don't I don't like giving off those kind of husband vibes, though. I like to be kind of like, I don't know, bro. That shit get on my nerves. I just want to be goddamn a fuckboy sometimes. Nah, you know? that shit ain't the move, bro. Them niggas be depressed. I know, because they goddamn can't find them a, a solid woman. And then when they do find and a girl. And the thing is, they probably ran into like at least, every bitch ass nigga that ran into at least 30, 10. To fifteen <laughs> solid bitches that they Bruh, just ran through. They always they always meet good ass women, mm-hmm. but they just can't handle. And that then you shit. be like, "Damn, you used to fuck with such and such." Yeah, you meet a girl and you be and she be like, "Yeah, I used to fuck with that bitch ass nigga." You be like, "Damn, bro, that's crazy." But see, yeah. I'm team nigga, so I don't never bash see, no nigga though. And see, then that like kind of taints your image of her, even if you wanted to really yep. fuck with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really wanted to fuck with her. But let me tell you something about a bitch ass nigga such though. Such. A bitch ass nigga. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, a bitch ass nigga. Always ends up in a toxic ass relationship with a trash ass bitch. Oh yeah, a bitch ass nigga always yeah. ends up in a toxic they relationship be, with a trash ass. Because they bitch. they argue like homegirls. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, I've been I've been watching uh Blueface and uh and uh that Shawty shit, shit lately. Wow, bro, that shit's so toxic. I like that shit. That shit weird. I, I don't know why I like it so much though, bro. It's wow. like I just like watching it. <laughs> oh well, yeah, it's entertaining to yeah, watch. Yeah, because you know I hate reality TV. Yeah. I hate loving hip hop. I, I think she's slow. Type of shit. I think she's slow. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, you know how I be going in on Kanye West and I be trying to like diagnose him with mental issues. Mm. I kind of be joking mm. with her. No, she really has something going on. I think she's because slow her for emotions real, for real. is like all, all over, over the, the fucking, fucking place. place, and like she can't just. She can't stay in one mm-hmm. mood to save her life. Mm-hmm. And then she snaps out and goes into a violent rage. Yeah. And I have a friend that's like that, and they diagnosed him with, like, explosive compulsive disorder. Mm-hmm. Y'all look it up. I don't... But they basically say, like, he just snaps out of nowhere. And I'm like, that's kind of, like, a super... Like, that's a human trait. We all have that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But, like, that's what they diagnosed it as. Explosive compulsive disorder. Yeah. That shit wild. And that's what she got, bro. And she be like... She be saying weird shit to that nigga Blueface, like, um, what she said to that nigga on that show. She said, stop playing with my dick, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I don't know. I, I swear, I just think she's slow, bro. Bro, I was like, what does stop playing with my dick mean? And I don't she know. just we kept might be saying too old. It. We might be too old. And Blueface bro. was just like, I'm not playing with your dick, bro. And I was like, huh? <laughs> what the fuck is going on here, bro? <laughs> is that how you supposed to talk or some shit? I don't know, bro. Everything nowadays is getting more and more sus. This shit weird. Nah, that stop playing with my dick shit. That shit is just gross That's as hell, level. though. Stop playing with my dick. Man, R.I.P. Kanye, man. Man, that nigga ain't dead. But nah, blue face him, bro. Yeah. Bro, that shit gonna end bad, bro, because goddamn... Bro, I was just watching them in, in like the interview they had with Angela Yee and how they was interacting... And I was like, damn, dog, like, you really scared of her. Oh, yeah. And, like, he can't say certain things around her and she didn't. Bro, she's super insecure and jealous. Mm -hmm. Bro, that's one thing I cannot do, bro. I cannot be with an insecure, jealous woman, bro. Mm -hmm. Those are two traits you just cannot have. Because, bro, when you have those disgusting-ass insecurities, like, you bring that upon me. And then, you know, the jealousy is, like, you get jealous over shit that's not even that serious. Because I work with women every day. Yeah. So I can't be with a woman that's like, 
oh, I just seen you. Uh, With such and such. Yeah, or like, oh, this woman just called your phone. Bro, most mm-hmm. of my clients are women. I'm mm-hmm. a photographer. Most of them are women. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just couldn't do no shit like that. And then not being able to say what you want to say, like, this nigga. She, she was about to rock that nigga on, on the interview because they asked him what's three things he like about her, and he didn't have shit. <laughs> <laughs> she was gonna rock him and he whispered to her because he obviously was about to say something sexually and she was like nigga stop fucking playing why would you say that say <laughs> she was like say something cute and sweet and he was like I ain't got shit you ain't that <laughs> you know what I'm saying I mean and the missing tooth is fucking gross I think it's kind of funny nah bro that shit I think it's just funny I think and then she funny. always naked is she yeah she always naked she always got her titties out bro always I know that like in her um in her video, she got her titties out. They painted and shit. She just weird, bro. Yeah, I couldn't imagine being in no shit like that. Mm-mm, man. Mm-mm, that shit hella toxic. I know, I know you can't because you'll go through some simple shit and just be like, oh mm-hmm. no, too much toxic shit for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be with my girl now, and I'd be like, that bitch toxic. <laughs> for real, <laughs> she ain't even really did <laughs> shit even close to for real, bro. Bro, Blueface knocked her daddy out. <laughs> <laughs> that's the funniest shit ever, bro. If nah, a nigga, bro, if a nigga knock your daddy out, bro, there's nothing else like that. Nigga's he's God now. Bro, like. her daddy stole off on on Blueface. Like yeah. Blueface, he was talking to Blueface and was like, "I'm her daddy." Yeah, and that nigga Blueface was on some like, <laughs> "Yeah, all right." <laughs> <laughs> he was on, like he was on that type of vibe, but he wasn't really saying nothing because you know, bro, like real laid back and shit and nonchalant, mm-hmm. so he wasn't really saying nothing. And like her dad was trying to like little bruh him, and mm-hmm. he was just on some like you know he wasn't going for that shit. Mm-hmm. So her daddy stole off on his ass, yeah. And it was this big commotion, and bro was trying to get to him, and Blueface finally got to him and rocked his ass, yeah. cleaned this shit, just knocked his <laughs> ass out, bro. I was like, bro, this shit so head. Because now you're gonna bro. be like, man, what you gonna do? Call your daddy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, get, get knocked out like you used to, nigga. Like, like damn, y'all get in an bro. argument. Now you got that on her. Like, bitch, what you gonna do? Call your daddy or some shit? Yeah. I already knocked that nigga out. Like, what you gonna do? You know <laughs> your, what I'm saying? Your brother? <laughs> <laughs> that like, for real. I'm trying knock to get everybody. Out a nigga that <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you trying to get everybody beat up, bitch? What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, bro. But yeah, that shit too much, dog. Dog, speaking of some other shit, bro, that's why I'm writing down topics from now on because I forgot to talk about something I really want to talk about last episode. And this shit kind of old now, but the people that listen all the way through, I know they still going to want to hear this. Mm-hmm. And um, we getting into the topics now. So appreciate y'all for listening for goddamn 30 minutes because that was the longest goddamn, you know, little, little, little pre-intro we ever did before. I ain't <laughs> even do no intro, but we got right into it. Mm-hmm. But the topic I forgot to talk about was this nigga R. Kelly dropped a goddamn project from he jail. Did. Yeah, he dropped a project from jail. You listen to it? Uh, I listen. I listened to some of it. The first couple songs was, you know, it was some old R and B shit that he did before he got locked up. And the last couple songs was part one, part two, part three. I admit I did it. The that's fuck what that it, mean? That's what it was called. It's kind of old though. He dropped this on like SoundCloud before. And mm-hmm. goddamn, so he just put it on the project. But mm-hmm. you know, niggas was acting like it was brand new. But he basically was saying, like, man, I, I admit I had sex with older women and younger women. He mm. was just, he was singing about shit like that and just talking about all the mistakes he made and mm-hmm. blah blah blah. But they pulled it immediately from goddamn. Everything. They pulled it. Yeah, they pulled it. Bro, this cancel culture shit is crazy, bro. This nigga in jail. What you gonna do? How can you <laughs> how can you cancel him anymore? Yeah. <laughs> like he's already in jail, bro. Let the streets have R. Kelly, bro. The people who want to listen to R. Kelly gonna find it anyways. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I got I got the albums that I like already on my phone. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm talking about like from when I first got an iPhone, because you already know one of my favorite albums of all time is 12 Play. Mm-hmm. That's my shit, bro. 12 Play, love- that was like his best. 12 Play and TP2 is yeah. my favorite albums that he ever made, bro. They they one of my favorite albums of all time. I like Chocolate, time. Chocolate Factory, too. That shit was crazy. You like Chocolate Factory? I like See, it. I don't really like... That was like early 2000s. I don't, I don't like, like post-sex uh, tape R. Kelly. Oh, okay, okay. I like pre-sex tape R. Kelly. Yeah. I like the like real R&B. See, bro, R&B music ain't what it used to be, bro. Like, nah. Don't get me wrong. This these, R&B nowadays kind of like... Bro, these women, these women can sing. Like, oh, yeah, what's yeah. the girl name to bust your windows out your car? I forgot that bitch name. I know you're talking about. Jasmine Sullivan. 
Her okay. name is Jasmine Sullivan. Yeah. Bro, she can fucking sing, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah SZA yeah. can sing. Yeah. And what's the girl name, uh, your girl like a lot? SZA. Oh, it's SZA. So what's the other one then? The one they say uh, look like a pit bull. Is it the Shea Butter Baby Bitch? Is yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking. I forgot her name though. Her name is uh, Ari Lennox. Ari Lennox. Yeah, Ari Lennox. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. bro, these these women are amazing. But you know what I don't like? I don't like toxic R and B music, bro. I'm sorry, y'all can shoot me right now. Yeah. And I don't care if it comes from men or women, bro. I like my R and B music to be about love making yeah. and goddamn taking a bitch out to eat, and kiss love, her in the mouth, bro. true yes. love. Slow humping. Not like I'm your side bitch. And yeah, nah. None of that SWV yeah. type of shit. No. None of that shit, bro. Like I like my shit being love. goddamn. Yes, bro. Love music. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? I'm not a lovey dovey type of nigga. Nah, but, but that's, like that's the music, the music we grew up on, though, yeah, bro. Like, I like every that song shit. was about love, bro. Because, bro, this goddamn. This new R&B shit, bro, that got them fuck these niggas. And I be seeing women online talking about some, yeah, SZA was spitting on this shit. She was talking about goddamn how niggas be doing this and doing that. I'm like, bro. So what? I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't care, bro. Like, man, I don't know if people know, bro. You are what you consume. Yeah. So, like, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been eating a little better this week. And I've been drinking a lot of water. I feel fucking amazing right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's just, I ain't really been like in my bag bag like I should. Mm -hmm. But I did a little better this week. And I feel amazing. Yeah. Bro, when I eat fast food every day, like I ain't gonna lie, I do got a Popeye's gift card. I'm probably, <laughs> this I'm nigga got a gift, motherfucker. Bro, I don't know why. My who, little who brother. Who the fuck got you a Popeye's gift card? Bro, my gift little card? brother called me yesterday and was like, I got you a Popeye's gift card. And I felt so fucking fat. I was like, thank you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's your head ass What the fuck, fuck bro? I know, bro. Bro, that nigga just know what make me happy, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Nigga know me his whole fucking life. He know what yeah. make me happy. Bro, that shit honestly made my day, too. I ain't gonna sit here and cap you down. That shit made my day. That shit still in my room. I'm getting that shit soon as we get on recording. But anyway, um, yeah, bro, I just, I like my R&B music to be love. Yeah, I don't like it to be all that toxic shit. And like I was saying, you are what you consume. Yeah, because like that's the thing you were saying too. Like you're not that that type of person mm -hmm. per se. But the idea of yeah, this idea of true love, you know, passion, love for your woman, love for your man. You know that that pedestal type shit you want to aim for. That's something I like to hear. You know, yeah. what I mean? it's something I like to see. Exactly, I like to watch. Bro. You know what exactly. I'm mean? saying? I don't like to hear goddamn toxic, goddamn. Because if you listen to that shit all day, that's what you own. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. bro, the worst thing you can ever do, and for you people out here uh, listening, because I know we got a lot of people that listen that got nine to fives, bro. I want you to try this one day. I want you to watch a slave movie and then mm. go to work. You going to be mad as fuck. <laughs> and that bitch. Wait, what you said to me? You going to be snapping on everybody, your boss. Cause I ain't gonna lie, the white man. Yeah, <laughs> you gonna be acting like Doctor Umar? No, watch Doctor Umar. Watch mm -hmm. Doctor Umar then go to work. <laughs> mm -mm. That's what you do, bro. I highly and, advise you do not do that. <laughs> yeah, you gonna lose your job that day. <laughs> <For real. laughs> you gonna spit on somebody. You gonna call somebody yeah. out their name, bro. You gonna lose your job. Then you you bro. gonna swear you did it for the community. Yeah, <laughs> and then next it's gonna you make know, sense too. Ain't none of your niggas goddamn helping you with rent, nigga. Hell no. Nah. You on your own play. You gonna be unemployed. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, though. Yeah. You are what you consume. Yeah. So when you consume all that toxic ass bullshit, and that's all you about. Like, ain't nothing like a woman and the fellas listening. They gonna know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. A woman that just fully enjoys reality TV. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you, dog. Nah, she listened to the show. I can't say it. All right, I'm gonna say it. I love, I love my mama to death, dog. But my mama don't watch nothing but reality TV, dog. And mm -hmm. I could just tell, like, it gets a hold of you sometimes. Like, you start mm -hmm. beefing with people just to beef with people because my you still watch people same beef. Shit. Yeah, yes. That's what I'm talking about because you are what you consume. And I love you, ma. Bruh. I'm not talking bad about you. I'm just saying, like, that's just what's in your subconscious. So you're going to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You just you just do it naturally. Like, it's kind of like, um, what do I watch and I do it sometimes? Um... I ain't gonna lie, like entertainment don't really do that for me like it's supposed mm -hmm. to, but it'll be something like 
I'll have a conversation with someone and they'll be like, uh, uh, okay, I got a perfect example for you. I'll go kick it with you like all day. And the whole day you'll be like, Slim, man, you got to start being nicer, bro. You got to be more positive. And you don't even know like that shit will be stuck in my subconscious and I'll really be trying to practice that head ass shit even though I shouldn't. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be why? Try, because I'm about to tell you why. Because I'll start trying to practice that shit and people will start walking all over me and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. now I got to slap a nigga because he won't pay me back my $100. Yeah, 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 <laughs> but yeah. I'm trying to practice the shit you saying. But And then on, on top of that, people also don't know what monsters they create. So mm-hmm. it's like, you'll say that, and then you'll come to me with some negative shit, and I'll be using the shit that you already put in my subconscious on you now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how that shit works with me. It's a little different from, like, entertainment and shit. Because I don't watch reality TVs or, or like, bro, somebody sent me um some shit from Worldstar the other day, and that was my first time clicking Worldstar in years. I ain't been on Worldstar in, like, two months. And uh, it was a video because the nigga AD from No Jumper, everybody know I fuck with No Jumper. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had went viral. Somebody scammed him for some steaks or some stupid shit like that. Mm-hmm. But um, the video, the recommended video under the video that the person sent me was um, a fight comp. Mm-hmm. And that shit had like 5 million views. Yeah. And I was like, why the fuck does a fight comp have 5 million views? Mm-hmm. That's that shit I'll be telling you about. But... Let me not get in my world star bag. Cause yeah. you know that bag is huge. Bigger than all blue bags put together. <laughs> Even though them bitches be empty as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> them bitches be empty. <laughs> 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 be dumping them bitches. <laughs> It'd be a whole bunch of lint and dirt <laughs> and pus. <laughs> It'd be pus in them bitches. <laughs> It'll be nothing in them bitches. Yeah. But nah, um, yeah, bro. R-, uh, R. Kelly was in his bag though. Um, I gotta need, check. I gotta check the project out. I ain't heard it, so I, gotta I don't. Check it I don't out. know how you gonna find it, bro. They really That's took crazy. it off they everything. Can't, they canceled a nigga who was already canceled. Yeah, this nigga got double canceled. Yeah, you recanceled a nigga. That's crazy. You brung the nigga up for two days, but see, bro, you know how. Um, first off, cancel culture isn't real, bro. It's just some mythological shit that people just come. No, up with. now it's real, bro. Some people can't get canceled though. No, like some people anybody. Is fully, Anybody can get canceled. Bro, they should have been. Keep thinking. They should have been canceled, Boosie. Bro. If cancel culture was real, they would cancel Boosie. Boosie is not at the level to where he's cancelable, though. He That's has, what I'm saying. He has, like, he's not too, he's not so big to where, like, you Bro, that's need, the sweet you part. That's the, the sweet part of what you want to, how you want to be famous. That's the sweet part, bro. I guess, but at the same time, it's like, at the same time, like, people could stop booking him. You know what I'm saying? People niggas niggas stop. ain't doing that. I know, but people can stop doing that shit. Like, hey, bro, when he came to Augusta, there was 600 people in that little ass club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that shit happen. ain't happening, bro. I feel like... Ain't no canceling, bro. I'm be honest. We can say that, but cancel culture has become real. All this shit has become real. All the shit we used to fear, it's, it's a reality now. I don't, I don't think it's real, bro. I think it's still just some like mythological shit mm-hmm. that goddamn Keep niggas just throw into the world and try to make real. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we're going to cancel you because you said such and such. And, bro, you know what else I, I don't like about cancel culture? And I ain't even want to talk about this topic, but since mm-hmm. I brought Boosie up, Gabrielle Union took a shot at Boosie and basically was 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 saying, like, you got a lot of dick on your brain. Like, he must be in the closet or something. Yeah. I, I, I remember seeing I don't, that somewhere. I don't like how people combat somebody that they view as homophobic with, like, you know... Trying to say they're gay, mm-hmm. cause like, aren't you aren't you beefing with this person because you feel like they're they're speaking down upon yeah. gays, but you're trying to put that on them also. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's kind of like you know we uh, debate the death penalty shit a lot. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that. It's like nigga, who's the real killer? It's like if you didn't look at gay as being negative, why are you using it to try to slight me? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So you're saying I look down on gay people, but at the same time you're being. You're saying I'm gay, which you're trying to slight me. Because what if Boosie really was gay? That's what I'm saying. So what did you just do that's just now? You, <laughs> so you're being homophobic in, in your own. Yeah. By saying, by... It's just, bro, you could go all day with that type shit. But it's like, at the end of the day, bro, like, Gabrielle Union and fucking Dwayne Wade are weird, bro. You know how that is, bro. I don't think... Man, you think you to be pegging, bro, for real? I don't know. I really... I mean, I feel like you be like... We all live in our own different worlds. I, th- I feel like that Hollywood bubble, 
makes you do some weird shit. I feel like you hang around different people so much that you just you start to think that weird shit is normal. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I hundred percent agree. You know what I'm saying? It's like 100%. I feel like, whereas in like, you know, certain different cultures and aspects of American culture are like they're more fringe when you come to like Middle America or in you know the inner city or urban communities. It's more like fringe behavior. But when you get amongst people who are hyper indulgent in sexuality, hyper indulgent in drugs, hyper indulgent in all kinds of different things, you start to think certain things are normal. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that's normal in their environment because they're in such a correct. Bubble. But it's not normal to the average person out here just walking around living. Well, you know, I have this you saying know? where I say, "What a man does in the bedroom with a woman is his business," mm-hmm. but. I gotta put an asterisk on that shit. <laughs> Why you said that? If you getting paid, nah, bro. <laughs> that shit open for judgment now. Yeah, bro. <laughs> it's open for judgment, bro. Like, why are you getting paid, bro? What? What? And then you... what is you? What are you? What are you gaining from your woman doing? And what is she getting? Yeah, she definitely ain't getting nothing. That's where it gets weird. Like, yeah. bro, I'm not. That's I'm like not a the, mental thing I'm not for the her. super conservative, old fashioned type of nigga. Yeah, but it's like I kind of like gender roles, bro. Mm-hmm. Like I like a woman to be submissive and mm-hmm. like have a strong man to follow. So I like that type of so what I like you, that type of thing. What about so you like gender roles, right? Mm-hmm. What if what if the roles are reversed? You have a man who's super submissive and a woman who's very strong, but she's a good leader. Is that fine also? Or it could be. I would have to see it though. Yeah. I'm okay. not I'm not closed minded. I've to seen the it. Point. I've seen I've seen it several times over. I have a lot um, of friends that like playing the the beta. It. Are they bitch ass niggas? I don't like calling them be that. Be honest, bro. I don't Just like calling honest, them that. Bro. Okay, okay. I don't okay. like calling them that okay, because okay. if it works, I'm not gonna put you on the spot then. If it works, it's like, are you a bitch ass nigga? If it works, it's like, hey, my girl, she's a leader. She's very strong minded. She's a good decision maker. She's an alpha. I usually just let her make the decisions, and I I take care of the fucking like house and the bills, and you know I go do my work too, but like. She knows what she's doing, so I'm gonna just follow her lead. Is that so? Like that? Not really. Like you got to know who you are. Like, okay, I'm gonna use you as an example. Like you do something I probably would never do. Was like that? let the woman run the bank account. Oh well, yeah, I yeah, would yeah, yeah, never yeah. do that. That's I ain't gonna lie. That's a mm-hmm. nightmare, bro. Oh, but it's, if it's, it works, it works. It's though. been a nightmare for me. Trust oh, me. nah, see, it's been a nightmare. I for shouldn't me. have brought this up. And that's, no, I but, thought it works. <laughs> no, it, it works, but it at the same time. How conservative I am, like with money, like I'll buy the things I like. Of course, I have a lot of things I like, but I'm not finna like just go. Carter doesn't need new toys and yeah, 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 yeah. you know, happy meals and new shoes every day. Like this nigga gets something new every day. I'm like, bro, what are we doing? Bro can't get a happy meal. I mean, he can every now and then. Nigga don't need it every day. Why? Bro, because that's when the niggas become fat niggas, and that's not happening. <laughs> For real, bro. That nigga's a toothpick. He's never gonna be fat. All right. That shit start happening right around fourth grade. Oh, that boy having flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. When I used to get on punishment, this nigga Young Weldon thought it was humane to lock a nigga in the house for a whole summer. Yeah. I know. I heard him talk about it before. You, bruh, you, you, what the fuck? Yeah, I heard him, bruh. Bruh, I was, on, I was in solitary. Yeah. For two months. See, me, the rule was... I got was, fat as fuck. I was just eating every day. When eating I was, and reading and drawing. When, when I, was I was growing up, the rule was you want your ass whooping, or you want to be on punishment. I've never picked punishment ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take the ass whooping. I've never picked it. Yeah. Like I don't even but know... But then it got to the point... It used to be like that for me, too. And then Young Weldon started just saying, I'm doing both. So I'm about to beat this shit out you, and you're on punishment for oh, two nah, months. Oh, we not doing And it, it wasn't even like little punishment. It's not like two weeks. Bro, if a nigga, nigga try it's to, like two, three months, nigga. If a nigga try to do that to me, I'd be like, bro, are you Hitler? Yeah. Like, yeah. what you got going on in here, bro? Yeah. This is like a super, a super goddamn dictatorship in this motherfucker. <laughs> Ain't no democracy in this bitch at all, nigga. You nigga. just in your fucking bag. You now. done met you done met that nigga. You know him. <laughs> that nigga is retarded, bro. You know that nigga. I mean, but that's that's classical 90s old school niggas. Like niggas that grew up in the 80s and 90s. That's mm-hmm. typically how they is. And yeah. now them niggas is old. They like they got back problems and knee problems, mm-hmm. and they just they just done got soft. Niggas because just want to be, they trying to be nice now and shit. You know. What but I mean? you know that's what I learned from them. The reason why they are like that now is because they grew up the whole time thinking that like being physical and being forceful works, and they're unable to be physical and forceful now. So mm-hmm. it made them tap into a new lane. 
Like and mentally, then, they had to change as people. Now we at the point where we could be physical and forceful. And I might and beat your old ass. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> you know what I'm sometimes I'd be like, <laughs> I should sneak this nigga. But then, <laughs> then I'd be like, nah, like I'm yeah. not gonna do that shit. Like I'm bigger than that. I'm better than that. Because you, you know? can't fight fire with fire. Yeah. But we got way off topic. What was we talking about? I, I got some shit know. for us to talk about though, bro. We got to go down the list, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we still got a good like hour to record, man. Let's see. Um, what was see this why this why I don't like writing topics down because I just had to had this long dramatic pause and got them I couldn't have no good transition because I'm mm-hmm. trying to remember everything I got down want to talk about. But let's go straight into the Megan Tory case. I know all of you out there who got them listening to the pod been hitting me up all week. This what y'all really want to hear about. Uh, I'm not even gonna waste no more time. I'm gonna make sure I make a goddamn YouTube clip out of this because we talked for 50 minutes before we got to the Megan Tory case. But shit getting crazy. You been following? I'm following, bro. I ain't this really is my been type that shit. close with it, but I know it's leaning more towards Meg Capping. Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's the vibe I was getting. From I what was I've been reading. I was gonna do a day by day overview, mm-hmm. but. I'm just I'm just gonna do a a recap, just mm-hmm. the overall recap. So overall recap, this is what's going on. Basically, the opening statements, uh, the defense presented Tory Lanes as somebody that's being railroaded and lied against, and that Meg is basically a jealous drunk woman. Mm. And the prosecution is basically going at the angle of Tory Lanes being somebody that's trying to cohort uh, witnesses. Oh, okay. All right. So day two, damn, I am doing a day by day. Day two, mm-hmm. <laughs> Meg took the stand and she basically was crying and was like, she wished he would have just killed her. What the fuck? And all the lawyers that I follow, because I'd be clicking on them niggas on Twitter, all them niggas basically was saying that was the fakest cry they ever seen in their life. Like she literally didn't have no tears come out. She was just sounding like she was crying and there was no tears. It was just fake as fuck. Day three. Her best friend takes the stand and pleads the fifth the whole time and asks the prosecution for immunity. Mm. They grant her immunity. She retakes the stand and she goes back on every statement that she made. She said she never seen Tory Lane shoot the gun. She said that uh, basically everything she's ever said, she just walked all that shit back. Recanted everything. Yeah, she recanted everything. Yeah. She didn't plead the fifth anymore. Um, she they asked her if she shot her. She said no. She said she don't know who shot her, but she knows Tori didn't. And now today, we're recording on Friday. Today, the prosecution is saying they think Tori Lanes, uh, basically intimidated the witness. That's weird. Yeah, they think he intimidated her to basically recant her statements. And that's where we at with it right now. Now. Let's speak about Twitter and social media because I got to get your standpoint with this. Mm-hmm. Of course, Twitter and social media, the mass majority of people that I've been reading on there have been saying, it's crazy that y'all still out here not wanting to protect black women. Are we going down that rabbit hole? That's where we going with it, bro. They saying that God. Niggas, niggas just want to not... Niggas hate Megan so bad that they want Tory to be free. I used to like Meg Thee Stallion. But yeah, you said you like Megan a lot? I used to like Megan a lot. But I feel like now what's going on is I feel like there's a lot of holes in what she's talking about. Mm-hmm. A lot of holes in her statements. And he, I ain't even following that closely, but the shit I have seen, it just don't add oh, up. Oh, I missed one very important part that we got to talk about. What is that? In the opening statements, day one, mm-hmm. the defense also presented the information they painted her out to be this jealous ass, lying ass bitch. Mm-hmm. And the evidence they had for that was that Megan basically grew up a girl who didn't really get no niggas. Mm-hmm. And like now she famous. She was she uh she trying to fuck on all her homegirl niggas behind her back. So mm-hmm. like they used examples. They said it started with Ben Simmons. Shawty mm-hmm. was fucking on Ben Simmons, then Meg started fucking on him. Mm-hmm. Then it was the baby and Tori at the same time. Mm-hmm. They presented that she was fucking the baby and Tori at the same time. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to say this because, no, no, no. I'm not going to say because because uh, I didn't really understand that. They was trying to like present a time frame of when Tori and Meg was fucking. 
And I don't know if they was trying to say that they was fucking after the shooting. I don't know. I wasn't, you know, I haven't been following the case. Yeah. But Meg does strike me as a very insecure person. Yeah. Uh, you could, you, I mean, a lot of people, insecurities scream out. You can just see them. Mm-hmm. You know, a person who's just overly this way or overly that way, you, you can just see all their insecurities just screaming at you. Um, I'm not going to say she capping, and I'm not going to say Tory capping. I feel like at the end of the day, this was some bullshit drama that they just drug out way too long. Yeah. Where they they could have just settled this outside of all this. And now, you ever, you, bro, you ever told a lie for so long that you start to believe that bitch? I think I have. It's been a long time. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, you ever tell a lie so long that you start to believe, like, damn. You think that's what's going on? That's but what see, I, I told you. I told you this yesterday. Yeah. See, I, I don't think I ever did that. I might, I, I may have, but I don't think I ever did that. But um, mm-hmm. I know women do that though. Mm-hmm. Like women, it'll be a, it's it'll be a situation. Yeah, it's niggas that be and like, they really niggas. believe the lie. Yeah, they believe that shit. And it's like, bro, I was there, bro. Yeah, like, like, man, I had a friend call me the other day and said, man, this nigga Damo said he he had sex with a thousand women before. I said, Damo, you believe that, don't you? <laughs> you really believe that lie? Yeah. That is insane, bro. And why are you 34 years old bragging about how many women you slept with? It's time to grow up, bucko. I mean, when you... This ain't no slight. When you don't have much. That's all you have. That's all you have. You know I got saying? you. So I'll let people have those kinds of things. Like, you have it. You get all the bitches. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But whatever. <laughs> Who gives a shit? I don't give a fuck. What you want me to clap? Yeah, you want like, me I just don't bow care. when I see you, Mister Bitches. Do your thing, Mister right. Bitches. I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna yeah. keep keep doing what I do. That's yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you though, bro. I know you said you didn't want to say it, but I want to say it. Um, I think Tori's innocent. You I would, think you would say some toxic ass shit like that. Nah, this ain't even me and my male chauvinist bag. You know what I'm saying? Explain your My way misogyny ex- bag. Explain explain your way out of your misogyny bag then. Can you explain? Well, it? if I can be completely honest with you, yeah. I'm not gonna be able to explain my way out of this bag. <laughs> <laughs> I can explain to you, I can explain to you why I feel this way, but okay. it's still gonna sound misogynistic. Okay. But uh um, do your thing, 21. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, I just don't believe. That a woman would tell a, a a nigga with little man syndrome that his music is trash, and he will pull the blicky out and point at her foot and be like, "Dance, bitch." That that sounds like a fucking cartoon. Oh, so that the whole, sound like that's that really where happened. they say the whole thing ensued is her calling his music trash. Yes, and that he was a horrible artist. That sounds like Cat because her music's trash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what the prosecution said in the opening statement. See, I missed so much shit in my in my bad ass overview. Yeah, but. That's what the prosecution said in the opening statement. They said that this whole situation stemmed. But yeah, the prosecution said that this whole thing stemmed from her saying he was a horrible artist and his music was trash and he just flipped out after that. Tori and her best friend is saying that's not what happened. She was drunk. She was in a rage and she was going crazy basically because Kylie Jenner was trying to give Tori some pussy and he was trying to stay at the party and she was ready to go and he was telling her to go and she was like, no, you're going too. That story makes more sense to me. She does. See, the thing that adds up, you can never like, you know how niggas will say like, hey, bro, I don't give a fuck how rich you get, nigga. All that money can't unlame you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, you always have that aura on you. I don't care how rich I get. I'm still going to be a square, bro. I know I'm a square. I'm cool with being a square. You know what I'm saying? I don't try to flex or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I get that same vibe from I get those square vibes and those lane vibes from Meg. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like the whole insecurity thing adds up. And you know, like Tori a popping nigga, like, you know, he out he out here. I can tell even though Tori, like, he weird and all that other shit. I could tell he always been kind of a cool nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like he like he he ain't sweating her like that's just some shit he hitting. And then like she probably thought, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to make the case. <laughs> I'm not trying to make your case. Oh, you jumping in the misogyny bag? I'm not trying to, bro. 
Cause I but I can see, see it. You feel me now? I don't I feel like I'm it, in my though. misogyny bag. I'm just in my logical bag. I could see it, but I don't know. I might be thinking from a male point of view, but I feel like I could see it. Man, I'm going to be 100% honest with you, and you don't have to incriminate yourself. I'll incriminate myself. What? I've been in situations where things has happened and the woman lied on me. So what? Uh, Numerous times. Yeah. So that's why it's like I kind of feel this, like, and like reading between the lines... I think the same thing. I think a fight happened and there was a struggle for the gun. And I think her best friend shot her. That's just okay. what I think. So you big, don't... Big Ax said he think her, the best friend beat the shit out of her. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's what he think happened. But, um... What you was about to say, I don't what? I'm just saying. So it's confirmation that a shot was fired. Or is there not no confirmation on the shot? It's fired? confirmation... And the defense also agreed that she was shot, but mm -hmm. a bullet was not taken out her foot. Two bullet fragments was taken out her foot, mm. which is technically a shot. So mm. the gun was fired. Yeah. And even if it wasn't fired directly at her and the bullet ricocheted and mm. fragments went into her foot, technically that's still her getting shot by law. That's what's being said. I don't know. Because the thing is, is like, I don't know. Here's the, This is what I'm going to say. I don't know what the fuck happened. But yeah, me neither. The thing is, the record. women, I want y'all to think about this. Is this the hill y'all want to die on? Meg the Stallion and his weird ass story? Without? Because you do know if y'all if y'all keep making these think pieces and these long ass articles about how men are fucking disgusting and yeah. and, and we want to paint Meg out to be a liar because we hate women and it comes out that she lied. Yeah, it's gonna y'all gonna look crazy. Yeah, your word is gonna get devalued more and more, and that's the thing is like there's this there's always this movement of believe all women, believe all women, believe all women, and it's like all right, we be team women, but then it, shit like this happened is like. Casey Anthony. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you yeah. don't ne you never know, bro. You just never know. Like, there's been so many stories of, like, women, like, uh, crying rape or women crying abuse. And the next thing you know, Sheena threw herself down the stairs or, like, did some wild shit. Women do crazy shit, bro. And, I mean, men do all. We're, we're way worse when it comes to crazy shit. Join the Patreon, right. and there's a story on there about a woman that accused one of my friends of rape. And I seen that girl yesterday, too. <laughs> But it's, it's, I don't know, bro. It's crazy because, like, you can't, I don't know. This, I'm just saying for all women out there, I don't know if this is the hill y'all want to, not the Meg the Stallion hill. I don't know if this is not the battle that most women will want to die. Like, no. Like, let's just see how it plays out. And then, I'm not saying, even if she does come out, she was lying. We ain't going to, don't cancel her. She was just being stupid. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't believe in canceling people. I'm going to be honest. Um, but, you know, hopefully she learns her lesson after this shit. I don't know what's going on exactly. There's still a a, a a decision to be made on this on this case, but you know, from the outside looking in, it just looks a little suspicious. This is a criminal case too, and that's what that's what I found kind of interesting. I was like, damn, all this shit is going on because this is this is the contradiction that kind of tripped me out. Mm -hmm. So Meg said originally she told the police that she didn't get shot because she didn't want to see a black man in jail. But now she's at the case as a witness saying that mm -hmm. she wants to see this black man rot in jail. Which one is it? Bro, you know people say a lot of Martin Luther King shit when the time is right. You know what I'm saying? But what you think switched, though, to make her go from... Quote, it's unquote, the, the protector bro, to now want to see him fry. Bro, Meg has never had this level of, like, media presence and, like, people on her. She's never had the eyes on her like this. So, like, now... Yeah, she blew the fuck she, up in the middle of a case. So, this is this is a huge case, uh -huh. at least in pop culture, and she can't just be like, man, I lied. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you got to keep, like... You got to keep the shit you gotta going. You got to keep that lie going. Yeah. So it's like, that's what I be saying. Sometimes you tell yourself a lie so long you believe that. So, bro, so what you think about her friend then? I believe her friend is probably the most, that's the one we need to be questioning. Because is she is she lying for Tori or is she like, is she, because she, it's, it's kind of giving me the vibes of she hates Meg so much that she wants to see Tori free to piss Meg off. 
So it's like we don't know what the fuck is true coming out of her mouth. And we ain't heard Tory speak, and I don't think we are going to hear him speak this whole trial. Oh, so he ain't took the stand at all? No, nah, he has not took the stand. I don't think he's taking it uh, either. Might not. If he's smart, he won't. Yeah, I'm he, not he a lawyer, though, just let but her, I wouldn't. He probably just let her dig her own. I mean, that's what's going on right now. People yeah. are pretty much on the fence. And I think, at worst, it'll be a fucking hung jury. Mm-hmm. Like, it might be two people that agree that uh, with Meg and say that Tory shot her. But, like, they're not going to come up with the majority vote mm-hmm. saying that um, Tory shot her. So, no. I think he'll be a hung jury. And uh, like you said, though, we don't know what happened. We just know it's a lot of a lot of lies, a lot of messy shit, just a too lot many, of too many holes involved. Too many holes yeah. in it. It's just like, wait, what? Too many emotional people involved, bro. Mm-hmm. Way too many. So yeah. this, this, w- one thing I know for sure is the truth, the truth is never coming out. So we're never going to know what the fuck happened anyway. Because mm-hmm. like I just said, Tory's not going to take the stand. Now, if he gets acquitted of all charges, he might come out and tell what the fuck happened. Mm-hmm. Because his little press run he did, where he did an ass of interviews and was not talking about the case, which I thought was super weird. I stopped watching the bitches after the first interview. Mm-hmm. I was like, bro, I'm not watching an interview with this nigga. He not talking about the case. The fuck is wrong with you? So, um, I think he's going to have to come back and tell us what the fuck going on after he wasted our time with all the fucking interviews. He's going to have to. Mm-hmm. And this shit remind me of the Chris Brown shit. Yeah. Even though my nigga those. Chris Brown was like, hey, guilty. <laughs> I beat the bitch up. Yeah, she gave me the herpes. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. You know what I'm saying? Which is crazy, bro. But yeah, that's it for the Meg situation, man. I hope y'all was fucking with that. Because uh, I'm following this case thoroughly. Like, I'm on Twitter like a motherfucker. Like, I'm on this case. This is this is my shit right here. Speaking of cases. Yeah. You know we got to talk about goddamn Gunner. My dog, Wanna. Hey, Gunner Free, man. I'm happy to see Gunner Free. Free to slime. I'm happy to see Gunner Free. Free to slime. Free Thug. Free uh, Thug. YSL already out. Multiple multiple members is, is is taking deals and coming out right now. Glad to see these brothers getting out with no jail time. Great to see it. Um, Thug looked pretty happy in court. He got he got cell phone footage and and text messages dismissed from his case already, which is definitely going to help his deal because I don't mm-hmm. think this is going to trial. This uh-huh. is not going to trial. I think they're uh you know. Getting things thrown. I think the defense is getting things thrown out, uh, so it can't be used in court. Thug Thug's gonna have to thug it out so they can get more things thrown out. No so pun intended. Can, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <that. laughs> so uh, basically, um, they won't have a case, and he's already served like six months. So this may go on for Thug for another six months. And hopefully he can get a good ass plea where maybe they give him five years or something. And I mean five years together. So basically he'll have time served because he'll have done a year. Mm-hmm. Um Hoodrich Hoodrich Pablo, I think is his name. Mm-hmm. He he took a deal 15 five years mandatory. Mm-hmm. So maybe Thug can get one of those type deals. But not um five years, which mm-hmm. is insane. Yeah. Hopefully a year or something. Now, as far as people speaking on Gunner being a rat. <sighs> you want to go first or you want me to go first? I don't even know. I don't even know if I have a too strong opinion about what happened. I mean, we all know that Gunner wasn't highly involved in any, uh, whatever might have been criminal activity. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, so... Let me go first then. Go. There's multiple deals that you take involving cases, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, This case right here is called the Alfred uh, plea deal, which basically where you state your involvement in an organization and who you are. Multiple people have taken these type of plea deals before. Mm -hmm. It's one actually in Augusta um, uh, that somebody took, and it's called... The gang uh, task force, gang task force uh, plea, where basically you tell what gang you're a part of. That's it. 
You tell what gang you're a part of. You don't tell your involvement. You don't tell, you know, who you are in the, uh, in the gang. You just tell what gang you're a part of. Mm-hmm. That's it. And then they give you a deal. It's like seven years or some shit. Mm-hmm. There was a situation a long time because that case is, is kind of recent. So I'm going to speak on that later. Like later on and down the road when that person is free. Mm-hmm. But there's a situation that happened in Augusta. Um, where it was a tattoo shop and it was a guy there named Joker was tatting everybody and, and they was buying and selling guns out the tattoo shop mm-hmm. and eventually they built up a case and locked up a whole bunch of GD members. Mm-hmm. It was over a hundred. It was like a hundred and something. Niggas was in there bringing bazookas. Some crazy shit like that. Most of those guys played out and took the same deal that Gunna took. Mm-hmm. They just said who they were and the involved the the game they were in and the involvement that they had in there or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's what Gunner did. Only thing they had on him was him getting pulled over with Young Thug and they got caught with a gun and some lean. And he said yes. And they said were they his? He said no. They already have that. That case is already done with. Mm-hmm. Um. They said is he a part of YSL the record label? He said yes. Is he a part of the gang? He said no. They already have this established as a gang. Yeah. They have informants. They have all that. It's already established as a gang. Mm-hmm. So if you're asking me, do I think Gunna snitch? The answer is no. And I've seen a lot of people like stay away from people who think Gunna didn't snitch. Bro, it's called a deal. You crazy as hell if you think Young Thug did not know Gunna was taking this deal. It's mm-hmm. a deal. They already have informants calling this a gang. Mm-hmm. Thug knows he's going to have to do time for this crime. Mm-hmm. Do you really think he wants his brother, somebody he came up with and helped become rich, sit in prison for a crime that he has nothing to do with? This nigga Gunner's a crip, if you really want me to get technical. Mm-hmm. Gunner's a crip. Do you think Gunner should go and do a life sentence with a whole bunch of bloods? This is a blood case. This nigga's a crip. Gunna ain't got shit to do with this shit. He probably talked to Thug. Thug's probably taking a deal also because most of the members are taking deals. Mm-hmm. And that's what's going on. Everybody's Everybody that's calling him a rat, do I don't even want to call them ignorant. I just think, you know, they just, they just a little closed-minded. What do you call a rat in your definition? Well, snitching is... Um, a lot of people call snitching when you take the stand and you point at people and you and, and you tell. Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of people call snitching. Mm-hmm. Snitching basically is just when you're involved in a street activity with someone else and you tell on that person to get out of the situation or to get lesser time. Yeah. And I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of these niggas that I seen on social media talking about Gunner was a rat. I know for a fact they've told on people before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I said on Facebook yesterday, you have to be crazy as hell to write a thank piece calling somebody a snitch when we all know you snitched before. Yeah. That's fucking insane. Yeah. But that's what telling is. I ain't gonna lie. I had a friend tell on me before about something, and I kind of like justified it because he wasn't involved with what I had going on, but he also had no fucking reason to be telling. Mm-hmm. And it kind of it kind of hurts your heart. You know what I'm saying? Not saying I was no street nigga in no streets or nothing. It's just that it was a situation where we got pulled over. Mm-hmm. And they basically told him, like, if you don't tell what's going on, we're going to charge you with, like, a DUI. And I was like, nigga, you couldn't take a DUI? Being realistic, though, about all this, though. Uh-huh. Because I know you want to get in your bag about the DA. I mean, yeah, I'm not a big fan of her. Um, I don't like to see black people try to throw other black people under the bus to make a name for themselves. That shit is gross and disgusting to me. Um, I would never undercut another black person to make myself look better or to try to make a name for myself. That's just me personally. But I get, you know, she has a job to do, but let's be real, she was targeting. And she wanted a big high-profile case to make a name for herself, and this is the one. And um, I'll be honest, I wasn't a big fan of this whole thing from the get-go. I never even thought 
Gunner should have been in jail. Like, I think it's just like you. I hundred percent agree. You really like you really put a black man through some shit he should have never gone through. Like, honestly, to me, like he ain't had nothing to do with this shit. I can't say uh, what Thug did is neither here nor there. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But like, especially Gunner. For the most part, we know this nigga really didn't have no involvement in none of that type shit. He was part of the label. He's an artist. He's out here doing his thing. For the most part, we know this nigga's a square. He's not like out here like, you know, catching bodies and shit. Like, come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, she sacrificed a couple of niggas' life, you know. She's sacrificing sacrificing lives out here for a career. And to me, that's like the lowest form of a human, human being to me. Like, I don't... I'll never fuck with her as a person. And I know she, you know, I'm just fucking Keenan that's Mitchell. A, bro, that's her job though, bro. No, it's not. It's not it's not her job to go out here. She could have did that to, to be any locking bro. Up bad people. No, nigga, it's cartels all around this motherfucker, but they ain't gonna fuck with them. Why? Because they scared of them. They gonna but they're gonna throw they better be too. That, but but the thing is, they're gonna <laughs> throw their own motherfucking people under the bus for a high profile case. You could have did that with anybody. She could have did that with anybody, bro. But she wanted them because she knew. They from Atlanta. They think they run this motherfucker. All right, I'm going to show them, and I'm going to make a name off it. And to me, that's just the now, lowest thing form I'll of give what you, I'm, though, what? is like those type of people be, be, be at the Christmas drives, and they be mad as hell. Like, this nigga think he Nino Brown. Exactly, that type <laughs> shit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I'll give you that, though. That's what I'm saying. And then this nigga, I like, what, thug? got like fucking 10 kids or some shit. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. You trying to, come on, bro. What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? You think you look so goddamn good. Like, okay, so if 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 it was a white person, would mm-hmm. you feel differently about this whole thing? Are you just mad because it's because it's a black, honestly, it's a black woman? I, I'm mad because it's another black person doing it to another black person. Yeah, but honestly, I don't feel like most white folks don't give a fuck about shit like that. Like honestly, they just know that's the hood, and then shit happens in the hood. Like that is just what the ghetto is. That's just what urban communities are. It's not like like um, you acting like he's John Gotti. You acting like he's fucking Al Capone. You acting like he's El Chapo. Like nah, it's like this is this is just street shit that happens in the street in a community that honestly America intentionally treats the way they treat. You know, we desert like the hood is deserted, bro. Don't nobody fucking go out there and give them jobs. Don't nobody go out there and like help them. You know why the fucking ghetto is the ghetto. The ghetto is an intentional thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The ghetto is not unintentional. The ghetto is intentional. Just like the suburbs are intentional. You know what I'm saying? So you starve these people out and then you mad at the decisions they make when you starve them out? Like it's like that's the dumbest shit in the world to me. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, bro. I just feel like she lame as fuck. I don't know, bro. Um I would never do that, you know, even me being where I'm from. The person I am, I'm not from the hood. I'm not from the streets. But I have a moral code when it comes to my people. Like, I would never, like, you know, unless it just got, like, so big to where these niggas is, like, BMF or some shit. Yeah. That's different. These niggas is, like, worldwide. You know, that's them type niggas. Like, it's like, all right, bro, like, I got to, like, I'm district attorney, bro. Like, I have to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get you the fuck off the street. Yeah, it's like, but, like, when you when you talking about, like. You moving packs, packs to Europe and shit. That's what I'm saying. Like, y'all niggas is billionaires off fucking dope. Yeah. We not talking about, you know, some niggas that's got a label that made some money for their family and goddamn might have got rich off the street shit, too. You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's little, that's pitter-patter shit. You just knew it was high profile. That's what you, that's what she needed. So what you think about the, um, the crimes that got them on and the murders with them going against, uh, YFN? I think that's just part of that street shit. That's yeah. that shit that just happens in the streets. So you don't think nobody should do no time for those murders? I feel like if you if you get caught red handed on some some street shit in a murder, that's just what it is, bro. Like do the do the crime, you got to pay the time, whatever the fuck the shit is. But but you saying it shouldn't be no hierarchy, like it shouldn't be no. I feel like Thug and Gunner shouldn't go down for a murder that a nigga that they know did. Okay, I got you. That's how I feel. Hey, because you know. We had somebody on the pod before that felt like little baby should go down because one of his artists uh, uh, oh, yeah. got into a shootout and the bullet accidentally hit a kid and killed him. Yeah, yeah. He felt like little baby, little baby was responsible yeah, for that. Yeah, what'd yeah. you What'd you think about that? And take? that's when you get into this slippery slope type shit. Like, bro, where are we gonna take it next? 
<laughs> if if Thug is responsible for all this shit, then who shit is Gucci responsible because he discovered Thug? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, are we gonna go that far? With that's it? what I'm saying. Like, where do we take it? It's like, come on. That was a horrible take too. What you mean? The uh, little baby artist shooting the kid take. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. was a horrible take, yeah, yeah. bro. I wish I could find that take and insert it right here. I wish I could, but I can't remember which episode yeah. it was. But that take was fucking horrible. <laughs> But yeah, man, free to slime, man. Free to slime. Yeah. Free got down. Niggas will be all right, man. I only got one more thing for us to talk about. Um, uh, well, really two more things. This one's gonna be kind of short though. Um, I really just wanted to get your opinion. The internet was going crazy. Glorilla just keep goddamn popping up every th- time she does something, it just keeps going up. Mm-hmm. And she put out a post, basically like, you know, a flyer or or an ad. And she said she needs a personal assistant. And at the bottom of it, it said pay $550 a week. And the internet was going crazy and was like, that ain't shit, whoop the whoop, blah, blah, blah. That's and an opportunity, though. It's, it's a great opportunity. And me, I'm thinking like, why niggas be online acting like they rich, like, like they make $550 a week? Niggas be at Walmart. Come on. <laughs> Bro, that's what I'm saying. Like, niggas be online acting like everybody got jobs making two thousand dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Would you um would you prefer to work at Walmart or would you prefer to be Glorilla's assistant? Glorilla's assistant. Exactly. I want to do get, something fun and exciting every you're day. You're gonna get about the same pay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, like a nigga that work at a warehouse or a factory, yeah, he probably made like two thousand a week. I'd I mean two thousand a month. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather be on a Zoom call with Yo Gotti talking about, oh, she has a show in fucking Vegas this weekend. Um, how goddamn you want me to move about this shit? I'd rather have those conversations than to goddamn be stocking beans and green beans and fucking, fucking corn on the shelves. You Correct. Know what I mean? Nigga, and, bro, see, <laughs> now, now I'm getting personal. I'm thinking about me as Glorilla's assistant. Mm-hmm. Bro, so we at KOD, all the strippers in there. Mm-hmm. This scripper really wanted me Glorilla. Yeah. I'm like, for real? That my dog. I work for her. <laughs> and she like, boy, I suck you up. You take me to me Glorilla. I'm like, blessings. Yeah. So now yeah. I'm in a goddamn telly with the ace of spade jigging it. You know, we having the after party at Glorilla shit. I'm in there jigging. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? About to get some sloppy toppy for my favorite scripper from KOD. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that beats Walmart. You're going to be in a lot of rooms you would have never been in. Yeah, and, and it's an opportunity for you to yeah. grow whatever brand that you have. That's yeah. what the job is really for, somebody that's like that's wanting to grow whatever brand that they have. Yeah, 550 a week, that's good. I'll take it. I'll do it if she double up. She got to double up. She got to pay me um, 1100 and I'll be her personal photographer and assistant. She can't be going crazy with the goddamn assistant work, though. Like, she can't nah, be on her Nicki Minaj shit. You're going to gonna have to get the Starbucks. Oh, no, I'm not doing that shit then. Nigga, that's what an assistant do. I mean, I'll get the Starbucks, but I'm not picking See, out look, all the... This nigga here. I'm ass. not picking out all the pink fucking... The pink oh, Skittles. Oh, no, 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 no. Because that's the type shit Nicki would do. Oh, well, that type shit, that's too much. Because, like... Nicki be in that type of bag. But... Glorilla, she seemed like she kind of down to earth. She ain't goddamn got up there yet. Like, you know what I'm saying? She probably, like... I like I wanna have like I wanna have Popeyes in my room. You know what I'm saying? When I, I get there that. in my green room when I get there. I wanna have fucking On um Angela Yee uh podcast, she said she liked to uh she liked to have her nigga nut on her food. So if she need me to nut on her food, I got oh, her. I got her. She didn't say that shit. Yes, yeah, she did. That's fucking disgusting. I got her though. Why on your food? She don't want to eat in peace? Bro, this is how she told them. They asked they asked her what kind of freaky shit she like, and she like, I be on some freaky shit. Oh. <laughs> and goddamn, listen, bro. Listen. She like, I be on some freaky shit. And goddamn. Ugh. This is an entertainment pod, too. I'm like, damn, we talking about a lot of goddamn in- hip- yeah, hip-hop entertainment shit. But uh, we, we didn't start like that. But anyway, they was like, like what? Give us an example. And she was like, y- y'all drink nut, right? Oh, and they were like, yeah. yeah. They were like, yeah, I swallow. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, I like, I like, I like to eat my nigga nut on my food. 
That bitch gross. I gotta show it to you because I'm probably not doing it no justice. You not? That shit is disgusting. Ugh. Oh, it's gonna be worse when you see it. It's gonna be way worse. I ain't gonna lie, she ain't the cutest though. She probably do. Man, you know, I, I feel the same way, but niggas be thinking she cute. But I think, see, man, I, I say this all the time, bro. And like anybody listening to this that needs some motivation, I'm about to say the most motivational shit you're gonna hear all day. You ain't ugly, baby. You just broke it fuck. <laughs> Cause these bitches that got them be rich as hell, these bitches be ugly than a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. But niggas be like, nah, they fine as hell. Mm-mm. All you need is your makeup done, your hair done every day, and some jewelry. And you fine as a motfucker. You not ugly, baby. You just broke your fuck. Mm-mm. Hey, That's you know what's the right weird right part though? What? Niggas got them liking the same thing that women like men on a on a woman though. You know what I'm saying? Say that again. Men, all right, so you know the things that women like about men. Mm-hmm. I hate when men like those same things about women. Give me an example. Like, she got hella money. She Oh, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She, she be dressed, she, she yeah. got the swag, she got them be dripped out. Yeah. She got the ice on. That is some bitch ass shit. That shit I'm weird to you. me. That I'm shit just you. weird. Like, I be like, bro, that's weird, bro. Why do you like that in a woman? Yeah, I'm like, with you. And I think more so because, like, that's the thing. Like, I could, I, those are things I could do for myself. Why yeah. would I find that attractive? But like, I don't know. Some other, some people find that shit attractive. I don't know. It's the merging of the sexes, you know. Damn, she going up right now because they just, it, a video surfaced of her working at a fast food restaurant. Why the fuck? What's wrong with that? I have no idea, bro. Bro, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. A lot of shit that be trending, I don't be fucking getting it, bro. I just I don't get a lot of this shit nowadays. I can't I can't find a video neither, bro. I wish I could find yeah, it. Yeah, please don't. Oh, you don't even want to see it? Mm-mm, and I just found nasty. it. <laughs> I just found it too. As <laughs> soon as you said you ain't want to see it. That shit gross. I just found it. All right, here it go. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, look, I got a goddamn screen record that shit. I don't know, bro. Don't know. But, like, if I had to say about Glorilla in bed, she is nasty, Y'all freaky. be doing some nasty, like, I do some shit that I never heard of. <laughs> like, what? We need examples. Ooh. Okay, so y'all do drink nut right. Yeah, so everybody yeah. swallow. Okay, we just say swallow. Okay. Drink nut sound like, nasty. Drink nut does sound nasty. <laughs> I actually but had to think about what she said. I swallow, I don't drink nut. But go I ahead. It, but I'm looking <laughs> forward to <laughs> Like, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> Uh, it's, just, it's just so corny to me. Oh my god, boy! He's like, <laughs> uh oh. Hold up. You like shit like this? I can tell. Scared. Bro. It's some weird know. shit, but okay. Type is we just got done eating, right? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, just it's 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 you two are in now. This is, yeah. All right, so type is we just got done eating. Then we had sex right after, and some food. And I'm gonna still eat it. So if you been knocking, I know my food. I'm gonna eat. <laughs> It's like dressing. It I'm going to eat it. No, that is crazy. <laughs> I've never even that thought to do that. Hey, yo. <laughs> you like shit like that. You like a little freaky ass bitch like that, don't you? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is fucking gross, bro. Hey, Ugh. that shit nasty. That shit nasty as fuck. Bruh. That's next level. I never, I've never even wanted a girl to do that. Bro, okay. <laughs> Now that we seen the video, because I was explaining it wrong. Now that we seen the video, all she was saying was like they ate before they fucked, and then mm-hmm. they fucked, and if goddamn some nut had got on her food, she ain't tripping. She just gonna eat it. Ugh. You know, if it's just a little nut on the food, she said if it's some nut on my French fries, whatever. She said it's just Stop, a little, dr- just a little dressing. Stop, Angela, eat them nasty too. They drink nut. <laughs> that shit disgusting, bruh. What nigga? Bro, that's what that's I don't what, know. It's some things I'll do. I'll do to a slut that I wouldn't do to my queen, though. You know what I'm saying? I used to be like that. Yeah, used, used to. to. Yeah, I'm not like that no more. Oh, you be slutting your goddamn queen out? That's gross, bro. I'm sorry, dog. Like now, bro, 
if you want me to stay in that house, dog. <laughs> you gotta do some nasty shit. You gotta do some nasty shit. You don't want me to hit the block. You know what I'm saying? You if you don't want me to hit the block, you gonna have to do some nasty shit, mm-hmm. dog. If you really want me to goddamn get in my goddamn, that's probably what I need, bro. My square bag, bro. Bro, you know I ain't had a boner in like a week. Oh yeah, nigga, stop drinking that liquor right now. No, it's like it's not even a liquor. I ain't even drank this week. Oh. That's the thing. I just like. Cause you know I stopped watching porn and shit. Oh yeah, so, so you like, so you're not like aroused, like nah, I just you're not be sexually like, aroused because like I tried to goddamn the other day, and my shit just was like no. Yeah, like he looked up. That's at me because and you like, created nah. this weird ass fantasy in your head off of pornography. You think so? I know so. So now I just got to get past that shit. Nah, you just keep watching porn. You think so? Yeah. It's nah, just I'm porn, not going bro. back, bro. I'm not it's going just back. it's just porn, dog. I'm not it's going not back. that serious. I can't go back, bro. It's not that serious. It's just porn, dog. I can't go back, bro. But yeah, dog, a bit want to got them keep me in that house, bro. <sighs> no. And you got to like, you got to keep that shit spicy. Like five in the morning, I go to drink some orange juice. I got my pajamas on. You got to mm-hmm. just drop my pajamas right there and shut me up in the kitchen. Yeah, you got to keep that shit spicy, dog. I'm sorry, dog. Like That shit low-key kind of gay. Nah, that shit ain't gay, bro. You brother. like goddamn spontaneous shit. Yeah. And and I like I don't like a woman to be super aggressive. I just like her to be real assertive. Yeah, you gay. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga gay as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you see you doing that Gabriel Union shit. What if I really was gay? You I know, doing right? that Gabriel Union shit, bro. Hey. My but, bad, my bad. I'm homophobic, my bad. Bro. <laughs> but my nah, bad. goddamn Bro, she was. I think she was joking too, bro. Like, nah, that bitch was not joking. I could tell. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. Nasty. She looked like she looked like the girl like at school. You go, you you hit up the goddamn get some head from. You already know. You know what I'm saying? So like, she probably for real. She probably do like nut like that. Yeah, bro. Not, but see now she just famous and she lit and shit. Mm-hmm. So like, she always been. I ain't gonna lie. She like my favorite female rapper out right now. Man, bro, this why we like her so much too, bro. She just a real ass bitch. Like you ever yeah. just hang out with a bitch that's just really fuck. Like mm-hmm. she ain't trying to get nothing from you. She just yeah. really kicking it. Like she just really like being around niggas. Mm-hmm. And you know, at the end of the night, she'll top you off. Them be I don't my even need them the be my type bitch. I ain't gonna lie. Oh no, I need the top. I ain't gonna lie. I might be a little weird, but like if I hang around a girl that's that cool, like I really, I be like, man, I kind of don't want to fuck you because I don't want to ruin it. Oh, nah. Like, you so fucking cool, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you nah. ain't never had, like, a girl that's a friend. You probably haven't. And I fucked her. See, you don't, see then you don't get it. Because you... That's how oh, you... Oh, nah, I get it. That's that how you... make the sex better. But that's how you fuck... No, that's how you fuck up the the friendship. Yeah, I'm ready to fuck that up. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga just wants some ass. That's all. <laughs> yeah, that's it, bro. I'm sorry, that's bro. That's all like, it is, bro. I'm always ready to fuck nah, the friendship bro, up. Like, I done had girls that are legit friends, great sense of humor, like, and I just be like, damn, like... And I can't wait to fuck them. <laughs> you got that super shit. I know nah, exactly bro. what you mean, though. Nah, because... I, it's not even... It's like, I'm attracted to her. But I'm not attracted to her off of looks. I'm attracted to her because yeah. her personality. Like, yeah. she cool as fuck. And that fuck. shit made me want to fuck him. Yeah, but, but it's not like... <laughs> see, you ain't never, bro. No, have I you ever what you're saying. Have you ever practiced restraint? Ever. When it comes to a woman. Ever. I, I turned some pussy down before, yeah. No, nigga. Like, she wants you. You kind of like her, too. And, like, it's a vibe. And y'all kind of cool. But, like, you just like, nah, I don't want to, like, ruin oh, that. You, you, do you want me to tell your story at one time I did that? What? And I can't say her name on the pod because, you know, she's a very respectable woman. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't know how to spell her name. I, I spelled that last name horribly, but that's her. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now let me tell you a story. So it was my senior year, right before, you know, I had went to jail and shit. It was like right before that. Classic Roger. Yeah. She was in 11th grade. Mm-hmm. She had... um. Just made the cheerleading team. Everybody was like, damn, Shawty kind of straight. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, this mm-hmm. beginning of the school year. Because, you know, I got locked up, like, towards towards the end of the first half. Mm-hmm. So, everybody was like, damn, Shawty kind of straight. And she came up to me one day, and she was like, what's up, Slim? Goddamn, you know, I'm trying to fuck with you, basically. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. I was like, you trying to go to my crib out of school? She was like, yeah. 
Bruh, I'm thinking like, you know, this is a good girl. She's not about to be on that type of time. Mm-hmm. Man, I got them get to the crib. This bitch get butt ass naked. Mm-hmm. I, I roll a blunt. Like nervously naked or like she No, like fuck? I came here to fuck. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So got now. You know how some girls just be like, I know what you want from me. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hate that shit. I kick yeah. a bitch out every time. But um, yeah, so she did that. I'm rolling a blunt. This the lame shit I ever did in my life still to this day. What? I looked at her. She was butt ass naked. I looked at her and I said, nah, I ain't on that type of time. And she said, what the fuck? Because you, you you know how I was when I was like 17. Yeah. I was in my bag. Mm-hmm. And she was confused. Like, this nigga don't do nothing but fuck hoes all day. And got down. She was like, why? She started putting her clothes on. She was like, why? Now she's embarrassed. She's mm-hmm. like, why? And I was like, man, I ain't going to cap you down. I want to be with you. <laughs> nah, see, that's different though, bro. And she was like, she was like, we well, talking about something else. But listen though, she was like, well, if you want to be with me, why don't you want to have sex with me? I kept a bean with her. I was like, I don't really be liking girls after I fuck them. Yeah. Like, after I fuck them, it's just a wrap. I kept, like, I told the truth. I said, if we fuck right now, I probably ain't gonna talk to you tonight. Yeah. Like, fuck tomorrow. I probably ain't gonna talk to you tonight. Like, yeah. But goddamn, I really want to be with you, so I want to like get to know you and shit. And then I fucked, I fucked her best friend, like the next weekend, mm-hmm. and she never talked to me again. That sounds about right. That sounds like some Roger shit. That's the lamest shit I ever did in my whole entire life, bro. Seventeen mm-hmm. years old, lamest shit I ever did. But yeah, man, um, that's the only time I practice restraint, though. Why? Wow, what was you gonna say off the restraint shit, though? No, I was saying like, bro, that's just like it's cool to meet a girl that you could like vibe with like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you ain't really. And the thing is, is like you ain't never practiced like having that restraint with a woman just so you could have that relationship with her first before y'all ever get there. You know what I'm saying? No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not gonna cap you down. <laughs> I was about to cap you down. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. But another quick story. It was like Thanksgiving a long time ago. And goddamn, my homeboy's god sister wanted to give me some ass. And I said, cool. I took it to the motel, bust her down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Came back. And his sister was like, ew, you you took my god sister to the motel? Ew. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's where I get pussy at. <laughs> <laughs> you know where what else I'm are you supposed to get pussy? Yeah, where else am I supposed to go? <laughs> and she was like, a nice hotel. You know, I'm a kid. I'm selling mid and shit. Yeah. I don't, that don't even process in my brain. Yeah. And then his dad. His dad was there too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I really was head ass. This story head ass. But his dad took me and my homeboy outside, and he was like, "Hey, young bloods, let me tell y'all something." Because you know we like we young as fuck. We might be like nineteen. Mm-hmm. He was like, he was like, let me tell y'all something. He said, "There's some women that all you want to do is just do the nasty with them, mm-hmm. but there's some women that's classy and elegant, and you just want to spend time with them." Mm-hmm. You know, y'all might have sex here and there, but like that's just the woman you spend time with because you enjoy her company and enjoy the conversation. And I'm gonna keep the buck with you, Big King. When what? he said that, I said this nigga got that shit. <laughs> this nigga ain't talking about shit. But when I got older, I remember him saying that, yeah. and I was like, oh, he was spitting. Mm-hmm. So that's why I know what you' talking about. Yeah. He was spitting, bro. Yeah, it's some but I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't have that in me. There's some girls, bro. I just enjoy being around, bro. By some, you mean like two. Yeah, and it's not like yeah, that. I know. I, some, trust me, yeah, I know. It's not man. a lot. It's not a lot. I know. But it's like, it's some girls I just enjoy being around. Like, I admire them as a person. Like, that shit different. But Glorilla look like she could be one of those type. But um, last thing before we get off, though, bro. I wanted to goddamn tell you about this nigga, about Twitter going in on Evan Turner. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me pee. Let me pee first. We go about twenty more. Yeah, I'll be wrapping up this show for real. Anything else? Close the door real quick, bro. All right, real quick, real quick, real quick. Yeah. This nigga, this nigga. (laughs) So the awards for the NBA came out. The new awards, like they named the MVP award after Michael Jordan, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, shit like that, right? And the people on Twitter was like, where's the LeBron award? And this nigga, Evan Turner, didn't stop to think and just decided to tweet and said, in 2035, if there 
is ever a, 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 a award for the bubble, if we have another pandemic, it'll be named after LeBron. <laughs> boy, they was on his fucking ass, boy. They were like, boy, you don't shut your trash ass <laughs> up, nigga. They said, nigga, you came into the league after LeBron and got out before him. Yeah. Shut your trash ass up, nigga. Bruh, that's another example. I forgot about Evan Turner ass. Nigga, me too. Yeah. That's another example. Nigga, you know who else I forgot about? The uh his name was like Michael Carter something. He was the oh, number yeah. one pick to uh the Sixers too. What the too. fuck happened to that nigga? I don't know, bro. I don't even know if he's still in the league. Bro, these trash ass niggas just be coming and going, and bro. And bro, we're averaging like damn near a triple double. Yeah, I think he got look, like hurt or something. And he, yeah, it I was. Ain't, I ain't seen him after. And the only reason why I'm thinking about him because it was him, Michael and Evan Carter Turner. Williams, or something. Michael Carter Williams. There yeah. you go. That that might be what it is. Mm-hmm. But it was him and Evan Turner. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like that's another example of the Dave Chappelle uh, skit keeping it real going wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, bro thought he was really keeping it real. He like, he was spitting that truth. And then, bro, they just kept playing highlights of him dunking on LeBron. Like, bro, we don't give a fuck who dunks on LeBron. Ask mm-hmm. the niggas dunked on LeBron. Bro, this nigga Jason Tatum, like, finds a way to dunk on LeBron every season. And I still don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. I don't care who dunks on that nigga. That nigga tries to block every shot that comes his way. Mm-hmm. Of course, somebody going to catch him lacking. Yeah. It's not like niggas dunking on this nigga. Like they DeAndre Jordan and shit. Yeah, or because he trash. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. Niggas get dunked on, bro. Yeah. But there will never be no LeBron slander on this pod ever, dog. You know what I'm saying? I feel um, that shit. Draymond Green, one of the best defenders of all times. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Blue. He also kicked the nigga out the game because the nigga told him, you know, old boy Jordan Poole that he punched is from Milwaukee. So when they played Milwaukee, it was a, a spectator in, in the in the crowd, and he was like, "Hey, bro, we are gonna give you a pass for punching Jordan Poole." And Draymond was like, "What you mean a pass?" <laughs> and bro was like, "A pass, nigga." And Draymond was like, "A pass, a pass." And he went and got the ref and got bro kicked out of the game. Oh, for real? That's the lamest shit I ever heard in my life. Yeah, Draymond a little sensitive. But the NBA gave him a free ticket. The the guy? Yeah, okay. the guy that kicked out. They gave him a free ticket and apologized to him. Because Draymond got that shit. Draymond just keep doing lame-ass shit, bro. If Blue was here right now, Blue, I told you niggas. <laughs> I told you niggas. But Blue got to stop talking about Draymond because I hate niggas that got them be beefing with niggas just because they look alike. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know what you're talking about. Bro. Nah, you know what I'm talking about. No. That nigga Blue got them beefing with Draymond because they both black as hell with little nappy afros. Who? Blueski. I don't know who that is. I don't know. Anyway, man, big keen, big keen on this bullshit. What you got before we get off, man? Oh, I don't know. Um, ain't nothing really crazy been happening. Um, y'all let us know in the comments if y'all think big keen should start watching porn again. <laughs> bro, I can't even get my wood up. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I ain't, I ain't even been thinking about pussy. Like for real, that shit weird. But um, funny story before we get off. What? A nigga, I don't even know this nigga, so I can't even say his name. Mm-hmm. He went to Damo's job and asked Damo's manager if she was a chronic masturbator. <laughs> and she said, what? And he said, you look like a chronic masturbator. Mm-hmm. And she said, what the fuck does a chronic masturbator look like? I don't even know why she entertained that nigga saying that stupid shit. That's so weird. everybody was asking. He was blackout drunk, though. Oh. At 11 in the fucking morning. Yeah, that's wild. He slept all day at mm-hmm. Domo House and woke up at midnight. Mm-hmm. And they was on his ass asking him why he did that. And guess what he said? What? I don't remember that shit, but I ain't had sex in six months. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. That's a weird thing, too, though. Because, like, that's another thing going back to the single thing is, like, I don't know, cause I've had I've had droughts. I've had like three month droughts. That's yeah. like the longest I ever went, like three months without hitting uh, somebody. You know what I'm saying? That that shit scares me too. Like the single life of like having to go out there on the prowl. I feel like if I was single, I would just have to have me like a couple of bitches I fuck with strong. Hey, bro, I'm a, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. Droughts happen, but it's not how you probably thinking. What you mean? 
you're not if you single, you're not just about to go like months without having sex. I feel like it's too much access to ass to not. Yeah. You got tender, nigga, a you drought got, might be a week, maybe yeah. two. You got social media. Yeah, nigga. Bro, sex is that shit's just too accessible, bro. Yeah. That shit going to happen. Then you can like niggas niggas who niggas who go 6 months a year without having sex. Mm-hmm. There's reason why that. You want me to break it down just like I broke down the bitch ass nigga earlier? What? Number one, they lame as fuck and corny as fuck and socially awkward. Number two, they dirty as fuck. Mm. Niggas like that, they have long droughts without having sex, bro. Mm. Mainly the socially awkward part. Like, bro, when you lose your confidence, you lose everything else. Your confidence mm. is what is 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 what gets you women. Mm-hmm. And when niggas lose that shit, bro, it's a wrap, bro. You think so? Yeah, that's what it be. Niggas lose their confidence and they just lose like how to talk to women. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it's a certain way you have to talk to women to make them feel comfortable to have sex with them. I talk to Blue about that all the time. But, yeah. I don't know what that is. But, um, yeah. That's, but That nigga scared of Blue, man. Who? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I tried but, to um, instigate real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, bro. Cause like I'd be like, I ain't been in the streets in a while, but I know like I can really like Nah, nah, nah. I see. can really like Hey man, we appreciate y'all for listening. <laughs> man. This nigga Big King trying to got them get divorced. Nah, man. I'm and good. that's all we got, man. Saying. We out, man. I'm just saying, like I'm a pimp. I'm a cow. I got the riz, like the kids be saying. I got the riz. I gotta get on prize pick, bro. Y'all don't get on prize pick. This shit addictive as fuck.